pretty impressive, isn't it? That man right there is the great Reg Park, the mentor of the great Arnold Schwarzenegger, who is really the granddaddy of bodybuilding and personal training as we know it today. Speaking of today, today is all about cardio and ab training. Now, a lot of people neglect cardio in their workout, regardless whether they're trying to build lean muscle mass or burn away the body fat they already have. Cardio is an integral part of your workout though. And today we're gonna to look at what type of cardio to do and for how long so that you can continue building your lean muscle and improving your physique whilst at the same time burning away the body fat. And also we'll be looking at abdominal training to help improve your posture, your tone, as well as get that ultimate six pack look. So what are we waiting for? Let's keep moving. Now, over the past few decades, we've seen an explosion of new cardio machines come into the market. We've got cross trainers, treadmills, bikes, rowers, upright rowers, stair climbers, anything, you name it. But for me, it's the old school upright bike, which is the best type of cardio that I can do. Now I'm talking about steady pace cardio. We'll talk about the other type of cardio a little later on, and that's interval training. So maintaining a heart rate training zone of no more than 65% basically means that I'm using my body fat as fuel as opposed to sacrificing muscle and breaking that down or burning up the food that I've just eaten or certainly within the past few hours. And for me, that's about level eight to 10 out of a total of 20, keeping an RPM of just under 70. Now this will differ for each and every one of you and it's something that you need to experiment with and find the right level for you. And this all depends on a number of factors including age, sex, how long you've been training for, your athletic ability and really just how good you are at cardio. Okay, that's a few minutes now, I'm feeling warmed up, you can hear in my voice. I'm still able to maintain conversation but it's at a it's a, at a higher effort level. And this really is all I'll be doing for the next usually 45 minutes, maintaining that heart rate zone of no more than 65. And if my heart rate starts to creep above that, I'll just drop the interval level down and try and keep my revolutions per minute at the same pace. So now that we've decided on the bike as our exercise of choice, let's have a look at the different ways that we can train on the bike. I look at it as two ways, steady pace cardio and interval training. Now steady pace is where you build up to a certain level of about 65% of your maximum heart rate to really be efficient in that fat burning zone. How do you work that out? Simple, 220 minus your age, and that's theoretically 100% of your maximum training effort. Now why 65%? Well that's just at that upper limit where your body's gonna be tapping into your fat stores and use it as fuel. Any higher than that, and the body starts to look for a more immediate source of fuel, mainly from the food that you've just eaten or that's within the gut, or actually from your muscle, and you start to break that down, becoming catabolic. That's something that we don't wanna do, especially if you're looking at building lean muscle. And that's really the thing that scares most people when it comes to cardio. They think they're sacrificing muscle for a little bit of fat burning. Well, you can have both, providing you work within these training zones. So 65% of your maximum heart rate. And for me, that's an effort level of about level 10 out of a total of 20, keeping my RPM, my revolutions per minute, a little bit below 70 RPM. Now, whether I'm wearing a heart rate monitor and keeping a check on, on a watch, or occasionally putting my hands on the machines. A lot of the machines have heart rate monitors built into them now, and just check every two or three minutes that my heart rate is around 65%. Now, you may have to work that out beforehand, but like I said, simple math, and then you have that number. For me, it's about 127 beats per minute. So I need to build up to that level and maintain that for anywhere from 30 minutes up to a maximum of 45, 60 minutes at the most. No reason to do any more than an hour's cardio. Then you really will become catabolic 
and start wasting away muscle. I'm pretty much up to that level now, about 68 RPM. And you can hear in my voice, I'm still able to maintain conversation, but it's that having to put more effort into it now. So now I really am working hard at this level. Another point, you might see a lot of people reading their books, magazines, playing on their phones, or simply just resting their upper body elbows down and letting their legs do the work. Not you, I want you upright. More of the body weight over the central mass allows you to put more effort into the legs. So with the arms, just keep them light. Every now and again, move down if you want, if you build up the, uh, the RPM. And you can occasionally drop down the effort level just so it's not the same steady pace. We want a little bit of variation throughout that 45 minute, 60 minute workout. Now, what about timing when it comes to cardio? When is the best time to do cardio, especially for fat burning? Well, I recommend doing it early in the morning, as soon as you wake up and before you eat breakfast, your first meal of the day. The reason for that is you fasted overnight and your body still needs energy, especially when that's the time it goes into repair. It starts to recover and rebuild all of the muscle tissue that you've broken down from the heavy workouts during that day or the day before. So your body's using up fuel during the night and your glycogen muscle cell, which is where your body stores its immediate energy, is going to supply a little bit of sugar for brain activity and a few other thousand functions in the body that I can't reel off the top of my uh, head right now. But that's actually when fat burning occurs, at complete rest. Now you wake up in the morning, your body hasn't had any fuel for up to eight or nine hours. You get on the bike, build your heart rate up to 65%. I know you're with me. Your body needs fuel. It's having to work at a higher level now than complete rest. Any higher than 65% and it's going to require more of an immediate energy source. And where does it get that from? Exactly, muscles. You're with me now. Good. We don't want that. That's when you become catabolic and start wasting away that hard-earned muscle. So we want to make it as exclusive fat burn as we can. Really, that's complete rest. So we're going to have to give a little bit on each side. And for that, it means up in our energy expenditure. That's where cardio really comes in. Weight training is great for calorie expenditure and using up a large amount of energy. But for weight training, we need sugar. Sugar is the primary source of fuel for weight training. And unless we eat in the morning, we're not going to have that sugar available. So fat burn, weight training. Weight training is ideal for building muscle, or at least creating that state so the body can repair and grow and cardio is ideal for fat burning. Hence why we do it in the morning when we don't have any food in our guts. So just to summarize now, pick a cardio machine early morning, make sure you hydrate yourself plenty. As soon as you wake up, drink about 500 ml of water and continue sipping on a further 500 ml throughout that hour's cardio. Have a heart rate of about 65% of your maximum heart rate, which is 220 minus your age and choose an effort level where you can still maintain conversation and keep your RPM going so that it's not too fast but it's not just like a leisurely ride in the park if you like. And there you have it, that's all you need to do for fat burn. Now, you know it's not gonna be that easy. We're gonna throw a few more things in there to add a little bit more variety because if it's one thing that the body likes, it's adapting to its environment so it has an easier life. And who doesn't want an easier life? There's no reason to do more than three sessions of cardio a week unless you're getting ready for a competition or that photo shoot or a special day. Two, three times a week is all you need combined with our four weightlifting sessions a week. But if you continue doing the same type of cardio, your body will adapt to it and it will become part of its routine. Now that's great, but what happens is your body's metabolism, it's furnace, it's energy burning, fat burning, central engine, if you like, adjusts to that and it actually lowers its level down. So in the first week or two, within that hour, you could be burning anywhere from three, 400, up to 500 calories. And you know, 500 calories a day, if you do that continually with weight training and cardio, can equate to a pound of fat loss a week. But 
from weeks two, three, and four, that level will drop down and you may only find you're burning 300 or even less, 250 calories for the same effort. In fact, you're having to work harder now with less results. So we need variety. And I recommend within your two cardio sessions in this particular weekly workout, alternating between steady pace cardio and interval training. And that's something we're gonna have a look at next. But there is one other thing that you can do with steady pace cardio, and that's add a little bit of variety of the type of exercise you do when doing cardio. We're only looking at one at the moment, the upright bike. I mentioned treadmill, stair climber, cross trainer, and the rower. So if you're gonna add any of those in, 20 minutes on the bike, 20 minutes on an incline on the treadmill, and 20 minutes on either the rower, stair climber, or my favorite, the cross trainer. So a total of three different exercises, and then that gives you room to be able to rotate around them over the following week, so that your body never quite adapts to the routine that you give it. Okay, that's enough cardio for me. Let's move on and have a look at the real reason why you're watching this cardio and that's for the ab training. So let me show you a few ab exercises to help you tone, develop and strengthen your core and midsection. Let's go.